So money fears can often look like suppressing your anger, people pleasing, saying no when people offer you something and really you want to say yes, feeling like you want to burn everything that you have built to the ground. Sometimes that responsibility can just weigh so heavy on your shoulders. So my name's Corey Batwell. I'm the owner of an entrepreneurial personal development company called Set the Standard. And these are the three simple steps to defeat your money fears. So please stick around, watch this to the end because there are some secrets in here and there's a little gift for you at the end. And if you do like this video, please subscribe. So I wanna start this video off with a quote and I've written down here a notion board, which I'm going to be prompting over. And at the end of this video, when you watch through it, I have a little gift for you in regards to this as well. So essentially a really powerful quote is to have a goal that is worth failing for. So you might be asking your questions like, how's this got to do anything with money. So how you react to one thing is how you react to most things. And money is an energy, the same way that your health is energy vibrating your, through your body, the same way that relationships is an energy, the same way that thoughts are an energy, the same way that food converts into energy throughout your body, the same way that there's energy everywhere. And your relationship to money and how money works is obviously going to reflect into your relationship to yourself. And I'd turn that around the other way. Your relationship to yourself reflects in your relationship to money. And if you want more money and you want to have a healthy relationship with money, you don't want to be afraid of money, these are the tools and techniques which are going to teach you how to do that. First things first is having a goal that's worth failing for. When you find that thing, number one, and we know if you're listening to this and you're a high-performing entrepreneur and you've been to the perspective is when you first went out and made a boat ton of money, I bet there was a goal that you would have failed for until, you know, until the cows come home. Absolutely nothing would have stopped you. So when you have a goal that's worth failing for, and, and, and that time it's like, I don't care what I'm spending money on. I don't care what I'm doing this. All that matters to me is achieving this goal, which can provide a healthy relationship to money, but can also reinforce some negative relationships to money, which we're going to get into. So the first thing to understand is that everyone has money stories. And that's usually come from your parents, from society, and from examples and situations that have happened for you growing up. And what that looks like is if you see on society all the time or on advertisements, save money here, save money here. You can save 10% off this. You can save $100 off that. You can save $5 off this. Getting stuck into the mindset of I must save, I must save, I must save, I must save can then prevent you from investing in yourself, investing into something else, investing into your own personal development, investing into your business, investing into investments in general because no, 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 I've got to save everything. When we all know when it comes to money is you've got to spend money to make money. Sort of like a hose. What comes in must come out on the other end. And what comes out it, with the intention of money coming back in, of course, it's going to come back in. It's how all businesses work. In regards to that, there is also parents put money stories on you. And that could be like come in, for example, don't talk about money. Shush, 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 don't talk about money. Oh, you can't spend that. You can't buy that. Why would you buy this thing? That thing's silly. Even from your friends. Like, oh, why would you buy that one? Why would you, literally one of my friends uh, purchased a Lamborghini and his brother said to me, why the fuck do you need a Lamborghini for? You idiot. Is what he said to one of my friends who bought a Lamborghini. And he just thought that was funny because, you know, it's his brother. But still understanding that that's a story that his brother has, which has been put on him maybe from his friends or, or his parents or something like that. And one of the brothers is really wealthy and one of them isn't as wealthy as the other one. So, you know, that might've come from the scenario of, well, they have different stories about money which has come. So we all have different stories and understanding your stories is extremely, extremely important. Some of my personal stories were don't talk about money, were you have to work so hard to make money and that money is the root of evil. <laughs> so for myself personally, understanding those, understanding what's coming up with those before I started making any money or have my own business succeeding and having a team, before any of those things happening, I had to unravel all of those stories and think to myself, no, I can do this. Where do they come from and how do they show up? And knowing that when I first started my business journey, being aware of them, firstly, of being like, okay, you've got to ask for money. It's not the root of all evil. Ask for it. You provide an awesome service. People are like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other part of you have to work extremely hard for money is knowing that when money starts working for you, you're not really working hard for money. And you do not have to feel guilty for not working hard for making money. Even though you can work hard and you do work hard for everything you do, myself personally, I work super hard because I love it. But if I didn't want to work hard, I don't have to. And sometimes I don't. Sometimes I go, yeah, well, I'm not going to work hard because I need a rest or do this or whatever it is. And I'm going to work hard next week. I've created that lifestyle for myself. So I can. And not feeling guilty for that is extremely important. So number one, understanding everyone has money stories. So I would challenge you to ask, what are your money stories? What are yours? And if you're on here and you're actually interested, like write them down. Like what are, what are your money stories? Like, oh man, where'd they come from? What, what are my beliefs around money? I like this quote here. 
Uh, and I'd like you to apply this to your name. So just think about your name for a second, your full name. <laughs> I'm going to think about my full name. So my full name is Corey Boutwell. I'm going to say a sentence, say my name, and then continue on with the sentence. And I'd like you to repeat this thing out loud to yourself as well. I acted like Corey Boutwell for so long that I became him. I acted like Corey Boutwell for so long that I became him. Even saying that makes me like, it just jacks me up with energy in, in the best way possible. And I was like, well, that's that whole idea of the thoughts, things first. Understanding your money stories is like, that's not who you are. That's stories that have come from someone else. So when you truly understand who you are and who you want to be and you create that person, you start acting like them, then you're going to start having what they have. <laughs> And that comes through deep self-awareness and personal development. If you're interested in something like that, we do this in my personal development community, Set the Standard. You can head to the Instagram or click on the links below and, and come and join us and get your mind absolutely blown. So essentially, what we've got here is number two is the difference between a slave mindset and a scarcity mindset. And understanding on the back end of this, I teach a lot of master mindset and I teach a lot of abundance mindset. And I wanted to bring to the table on this specific video the, the slave mindset and scarcity mindset so we know what not to do. If you want to learn more on this, obviously join the community. The slave mindset here is looks like powerlessness, dependency, desire to please others, internalize the values and opinions of others, unable to assert values and opinions into the world or others around them, being passive or submissive, sacrifice interests and desires to conform to please others or others' interests and prevents their full potential. Just notice, planting the seed, how your money fears aren't just money fears, they come from something else. Now I'm going to convert these into a scarcity mindset, right? So powerlessness looks like can't influence one's own abundance. Oof. Dependency shows up in neediness projected onto others. Oh, I need this. I need your help to do this thing. Uh, by the way, this is a projection gun. If I point it at someone and I go like this, it means like you're projecting. Because if I'm projecting, I go like this. So <laughs> if you are notice you're projecting... <laughs> It's uh, there. And a projection, by the way, is assuming something about someone else that comes from your own insecurities, wounds, expectations, something like that. So dependency shows up in neediness projected onto others. Shows up in the form of, I might need this business coach to get here. I need this person to help me. I need this influencer to shout out for me. I need this thing when the all internally, all you really need is yourself, knowing 100% what you've got to do and do that, which is why personal development is, and self-awareness is so important. So the desire to please others. Resentment and comparison builds. So when you have this desire to please others, start resenting and comparing yourself, internalizing the values and opinions of others, which is suppresses anger and finds it difficult to admit that they're projecting and, comparis and comparing and difficult to admit that they're feeling jealousy as well. So when you're internalizing the values and opinions of others, this is what happens. You find it difficult. You suppress all these things. It's crazy. Um, so unable to assert values and opinions into the world, others around them results in hiding or attachment to saving. So it's when you're like sort of, hide away, like, oh, I don't want to be seen, don't want to be seen. And then like, oh, I'm just going to save and try to save all my money. Like, don't worry about this. I'm just going to hide away, save all my money. Um, everyone else can do it. And I'm just going to be here in my own little world. Poor. The passive or submissive comes down to thinks abundance is the root of all evil and pretends it doesn't exist. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, people who let things go. And, and this is, by the way, not just for people who, this is a lot of people who make a lot of money as well. Because what I found in my experience is the people who end up making a lot of money, if they haven't done their own personal development growth work yet, is they suffer from this the worst, like the worst, because they're like, ah, oh, I can't lose a cent. And sometimes like I've literally worked with people and CEOs who have 40 months worth of payroll for all of their team in the bank account. And they're still freaking out about what's coming in to pay people right? Still freaking out and like don't have a good relationship with abundance. I'm like, that is abundance right there. <laughs> you have got like almost four years <laughs> worth, of, worth of payroll in your account. Um, so that's how things, things show up. Sacrifice interests and desires to conform or to please others' interests. So people pleasing and self-sabotage to not have to face one's lack of responsibility. So that's what happens. When people self-sabotage or they people please and do things for others and find a way to always not get to where their goal is, is because they have to face off with the amount of responsibility that is going to be put on their shoulders. So sometimes that would look like, you know, if you're making a million dollars a year and then you go 
to, to you know, spend $100,000 on a marketing campaign, you're like <gasps> freaking out. You got to buy $200,000 worth of stock or something like that. And you go, oh my goodness, I got to sell all of this. That's a lot of money. Um, so I'm just going to self-sabotage and, you know, bring the business back down and not let it grow. So I don't have to deal with that amount of responsibility. This also shows up in relationships. This shows up in your health, like everywhere. It's crazy. Uh, prevents full potential. So lost lack of direction and the need to burn everything to the ground. So when you prevent your own self from, you know, full potential or actually getting up there because it's like a almost a bit of a scared to be seen, what happens is it feels like, ah, oh, I'm lost, I'm stuck, and I just want to burn everything down, like, and just ah, get rid of this. I want it feels pressure and overwhelming and feels like you truly can't be yourself, which is quite a nasty place to be. So I hope that this table is really, really beneficial. So ideas are like electricity and it's not the bulb that has the power. It's the transformer. So when you have an idea, it's you that is the transformer that converts your ideas into reality. So it's sort of like if someone comes to your house and let's say you had no idea how light bulbs work and someone comes in and puts a tiny little light bulb, like a couple of watts and you put it in, it's just this faint little orange light and you need like a thousand of them to light up your room. You go, holy, like I need a thousand lights here to light up my room. And then imagine if you had no idea about electricity and someone knocked on your door and they're like, this bulb, if I plug it into your roof right now, it's going to light up the entire room. You go, no way. You plug it in there, lights up the entire room. You're like, that bulb is so special. And we all know that like, the electricity is there the whole time. It's got nothing to do with the bulb. You've just plugged the bulb into the electricity and the transformers converted it into more light energy. Nothing to do with the bulb. Electricity has always been there. The same way that your relationship to complete abundance and moving through the fears of uh, money and the rest of it is there. Like that awesome person who can just be so free is just so there. And what we're doing hopefully within this video is understanding that we just want to plug the right light bulb into you, which is again, what we do in Set the Standard Community. It is awesome. So the third tip here is avoidance and reaction to money. So understanding your own avoidance patterns is really an awesome piece of self-awareness because when you understand this piece of self-awareness and you get it, you don't have to deal with it anymore and you can make the right money decisions without having to feel ick, anxious, yucky and like, oh, I can't do this and having any limiting beliefs around it. So what it is is just understanding that you have money in, money out and money hold, right? <laughs> this is a tour, like my accountant teaches this, a lot of other people teach this and you either have a money in problem, money out problem or a money hold problem and everyone does at some point. A money in problem would be you not feeling good enough to go and go out and get as much money in as possible. Oh, I need to go and make more money in. Or for some reason, I just can't go and get money in. Like, why is this thing? So that's a money in problem, right? Number two problem is a money out problem. So not being in a position where you, or a money out problem is when your money's coming out too much, right? There's too much money out. You haven't got the systems, the accounting, the, the accountability, the structure, the processes, different cards or whatever it is so that you can set up your bank account and spending in a way that prevents, that can prevent you from spending too much. And then money hold problem is being in a position where you don't spend any money. <laughs> and it just causes this block, like this block up from you for is preventing the flow of money. It's like, I need to save, I need to have all this money here. I don't want to spend it. I've literally worked with people and like some top CEOs who are only paying themselves like them. I'm not, I'm not kidding. They're worth like 40, $50 million a year. I'm um, not $50 million a year, just in total. And they're paying themselves like 70, 70 K a year. <laughs> right? Obviously they put a lot of expenses on the business thing. They live this luxurious lifestyle because the business pays for all that, but they weren't paying themselves enough. So I remember running through and being like, wow, that's like a money hold problem. And all these things were showing up in their lives, for example, of being like guilty to go on holidays, feel like they couldn't pay for this thing, couldn't pay for that, and they get triggered and scarce. And you don't want those scarce things consistently coming up in your brain on a regular basis because then that's always going to put you in a scarcity mindset. If you're always in a scarcity mindset, how are you going to make abundant decisions? So we had to change some things in their life to make it like a, um, like a lot more fruitful, a lot more abundant. So we just created an abundance bank account. Is all we did and just put like more money in there so that when anything out of the blue comes out, they just go sick, pay for it and not feel scarce. They just feel abundant. And now because of that, they have a more abundant lifestyle. They have more love. They have more money is coming in. More opportunities are there because their brain and their frequencies are with the right ideas and the right light bulb is plugged in and abundance is everywhere. So what flows out of your life, so what you're consistently giving out in terms of ideas and energy and vibration must flow in, All right? Interesting, which is why self-talk, how you think and your own development and self-awareness is so 
critically important. So if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. And if you're interested in learning some more of this and diving in, I've created a special Notion board just for you. You can go click down below and you can get all of the, the notes on here on a Notion board so you can have a bit of a look in and read through these things. And if you do want to level up, become more abundant, change your mindset and grow in self-awareness and grow into a better version of yourself, come and join the community. It is one of the best places to be for that. Well, I'll come in and literally coach you myself, which is really awesome. And I'd love to have you on there. So big love guys. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one.